Hey, welcome back, Three Strands Friendship. We are back. We are in the book of 1 John, and we are continuing on with a new chapter, kind of a new thought. Uh, we are in chapter 3. So grab your Bibles. Let's read along with me. Chapter 3, we're just doing the first three verses, verses 1, 2, and 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So John has got this new kind of theme, this new topic. He's switching gears a little bit. Uh, from what we have been talking about. And now he's kind of transitioning into this idea of family. He's basically saying this, that we are involved, we are part of a new family. You have been adopted into a new family, into God's family. And as that, as we are part of this new family, we act differently. This new family is completely different than the last family, the family of the world. We don't act like them. We do it differently in this family. We act like the dad. We act like God. Okay, And so we want to continually do that. And he goes on and he starts to talk about this. And he says, uh, uh, he starts off by starting at the top. He says, see what kind of love the Father has shown you. God has shown you such an incredible amount of love. I mean, we are the lowest of the low, and God is the highest of the high, and he has adopted us. He came down to our level and said, I want you. I want you to be on my in my family. He's adopted you. It is such an incredible love. Uh, he sent Jesus to die for you so that you could be part of his family. That's how much God loves you, and it's an incredible amount. He shows his love for us in so many ways. I'm sure all of you have stories about how God has shown love to you. But starting with the Father, he shows us love. And then he says, but you're not going to you're not going to be understood by the world because the other the other family, the world, they look at us and they're like, these people are nuts. They're crazy. Because they don't recognize us. They don't recognize why we live the way we do, why we act the way we act. And it's because we are on a whole new family. And so he says, they will not, uh, they don't know us because they didn't know him. They don't know Jesus. And so they're not going to understand why we live and do and think the way that we do. And so he says, when... Um, when Jesus comes back. So this is kind of continuing on from the last section that we talked about. This last week at Youth, we talked a lot about what it's going to look like when Jesus returns. And so he's kind of saying this, that the Father shows incredible love to us. The Son is coming back, and we can have hope in that. Now, we get to have this incredible life after he returns. When it's all come, when he comes back and everything's all said and done, and we are with him in heaven forever for eternity, it is amazing. We don't have to deal with all of the problems of this world, but until then, we still do. But we look forward. We we have hope in what is to come. And he says, when he appears, we will be like him. We're not going to be identical to him, but we're going to be like him. We're going to have a new body. We're going to talk about some of the verses that. Uh, that talk about this. We're going to look at those this week at youth group. Uh, so come and we'll check it out, what this looks like. But then he says in verse 3, everyone who hopes in this, that we hope in this new body, this future, what it's going to look like, that we don't have to deal with sin when pain anymore, that we don't have uh, failing minds anymore, all of these things, we look forward to that and hope. And so for those who do have hope in him, we do something in the meantime, while we're here in this world, we have uh, this thing called purification. We purify ourselves. It says, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Jesus is pure, and we want to be like him, so we purify ourselves. Now, this word purify is, um, 
it's, it's kind of an old uh, blacksmithing word where you take an element and if you want to purify gold, you throw it into the fire in intense heat and it gets rid of all of the impurities. It gets rid of the weaknesses. And if you want to purify your body in the Old Testament for rituals, you would go through this um, process that would cleanse you from all of your uh, impurities. And so we do that in our faith with our life. We want to live for him in this hope of what is to come. And we purify ourselves. We go through trials. We go through hard things. We go through a difficult season because we know it's the right thing to do. And it's going to remove all of the impurities within us, all of our weaknesses that we struggle with. So we have other people around us, other Christians, and we walk together going through and saying no to sin, living differently, and we purify ourselves. Now, we're going to get into that a lot more next week. Uh, the next part of this uh, chapter three deals a lot more practical about what does that purification look like? How do you purify yourself? So we'll get into that later, but we want to purify ourselves, remove ourselves from sins because of what is to come, because of the hope that we have later. Make sense? Okay. Here's some questions for you in your group time. Question number one, give us an example, share an example from your life of how God has shown you love because he shows us great love. And question number two is what area of your life are you purifying yourself and how can we help you around you? Okay, so talk about those with your group and I will see you guys real soon on Wednesday night.